to call this meeting of order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly hybrid MLS breakfast meeting. My name is Jody Yu, and I'm still the May program chair. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Brandon Sabransky to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You forgot. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I was focused on the fun. At this time, here to inspire us for the week is Ms. Dora Liu. Morning, my fellow members. I just want to make sure everyone got this inspirational, the upcoming from our CR Sacramento level up. So hang around with the people who force you to remember to keep progressing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. If you are a member and would like to make an announcement, please fill out an announcement form located to my left and return to completed forms to LN. Oh yeah, we can just bypass that. They know who I am. A uh, few housekeeping tips. All participants on Zoom will have um, will be muted upon entry. If you have any comments or questions, please type it in the chat box. Please remember to join us weekly as we have our hybrid MLS breakfast meetings at 9 a.m. every Thursday. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be available online on our YouTube channel, West San Gabriel Valley Realtors. Please remember to follow us on social media. In our, we have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow WSGBR. Um, you can watch all of our pre-recorded videos on YouTube. And please join our text message group. You can text WSGBR to the number 888-301-2201. Today's agenda. First, we will start with our affiliate spotlight, Mr. Eduardo Higuchi from New York Life. We have two guest speakers today, Mr. Alan Ibarra from Rocket Roofing and Daniel Westerang, like Boomerang, from Western Supreme Rooters. Just a reminder to be eligible for today's drawings. After the uh, guest speakers, you must be a West San Gabriel Valley Realtor member and be in person at the association. We'll be having our attendance drawing, our 50-50 drawing, and our Amazon gift card drawing. Today, our affiliate spotlight will be brought to you by the affiliate committee, Chair Lena Sarkari of US Bank and Vice Chair Teresa Wynn of Loan Direct. The floor is yours, Eduardo. Good morning, everybody. So I wanna thank everybody for the opportunity to come up here and kind of tell you who I am. Uh, I live a pretty complex life. So what I did is choose a handful of slides so that you can kind of get a picture of who I am and what I am. So let's kick it off. And the question always is, is who is Eduardo Higuchi, also known as Mr. Ed? 1987, I actually was part of this uh, association as a title rep. And that lasted till 1994 when I moved on to uh, another uh, field of uh, expertise. And, uh, but I gotta say, when I look back, at what I experienced and learned and the people that I met to this association, they're all fantastic. I learned a lot as a young guy and I move forward with that. Do I have a family? Yes. There's a picture of my family. Just so that you know, I don't cause any misunderstanding that young gal in the back of the blonde hair, she is not my daughter. <laughs> I consider myself kind of fairly good looking, but not that good looking. <laughs> so I just wanted to you know, you know, let you guys know that. And my, my daughter, she's just, uh, you know, uh, is graduating this year and she just got accepted to UC Berkeley. So I'm yeah. happy that that intelligence came from uh, her mother's side. Uh -huh. And then the last guy in the back is my son and he's like my little me and he loves food, which you can tell by my shape too. And you know, he and I, we pack team and we go wherever we need to go to find uh, delicious things to eat. 
my philosophy and the way I look at myself, I always feel that I'm one of the most blessed people in this world. Why? Because I come from a pretty humble background, coming from South America at the age of uh, eight. And uh, so anything that happens, I, I take it not for granted, but I, as a blessing. So I feel like I'm at the top of the world and at all, all the time. So that's, you know, why I'm up there. And I think the, the rock started to crack once I got up there too. So yeah. I, I am an American, American citizen, and I'm proud of it. Why? Because again, I'm always reminding myself and my family and my kids that this is one of the best places in the world. You work hard, persevere, and the word persevere is actually pretty important because nowadays I see a lot of people, I hear a lot of people tell me about, you know, how things are not going the way and the things are not good over here, but trust me, the United States is, uh, you know, being here, it's like hitting the lottery, so I you know, just wanted to let you, our first car in 1971, uh, you see the, the guy in the middle there, I had some swag back there. <laughs> but you know, it, it always amazes me how things turned out. Given that you know, my mom had to raise three kids, and my dad, being the typical Japanese father, who was always working, but you know, just juggling everything. I look at my family now, and you know, we have only two kids, and boy, you know, it's a lot of work. So you know, God bless my my mom. Last week, I heard that Martha Stewart is going to <laughs> appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. So I said, why not me? <laughs> but, you know, I think it got rejected before I pushed these send buttons. But it's like, kind of tells you, what do I do? I work with uh, New York Life, but I've actually been uh, helping families and working with families and business owners since 2004, started with American Express. And I think it's been a, a career that's been very fulfilling. Why? I actually get to become friends and part of their, my clients' families' lives, right? So you get into the nitty gritty, you understand what they're going through. And the best thing is I'm able to create a plan that fits their uh, future and, and aspirations in life. And I do wish I had a financial advisor back in 2000. Oh, back in 1994, because it would have made you know, life look a lot different at that time that I had that kind of uh, you know, advice. So um, what do I believe in? To, to be decisive, whether you're wrong or right, make a decision. Again, the world, is, uh, the world of life is paved with flat squirrels who couldn't make up their mind. That's important because you know we're gonna go into the well, kind of a weird place in, in the economy pretty soon. But you know, just stay steady to what you believe in and just go for it because I think that's the best way to combat the uncertainties of what we're gonna be going through. Am I athletic? Not really, but I used to be pretty active. I used to participate in the, you know Japanese fencing and uh, you know, I, I did that until uh, I got married. Other things came up you know, like raising kids and everything. But this is one of the sports that I enjoy the most. And uh, if anybody you know, in here does kendo, uh, don't come to me because I'm pretty bad at it. <laughs> so being part of the community is important. And I think with you know, New York Live, uh, we, we take, and par take part and we participate in a lot of uh, you know, charity things. And uh, the Kiwanis Club out in Fountain Valley, they have this bowl up on every year and it's, it's, it's amazing how many people you get to meet and the things that you can contribute to this life. What sport do I like? I like baseball. And the Dodgers has been my team since 1971. And so now I got my young son and my daughter who also enjoy baseball. And it's kind of neat, right? You have a young girl who really likes baseball. So. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But we go to the games as frequently as possible. And then I do find myself uh, going to the Angels game too lately because one, you know, Otani is out there. Right? So it's a, yeah. it's a remarkable player to watch. And then hiking is something that I enjoy. Or actually, I enjoy anything that's outdoors. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I try to do one, one uh, hike a month. And, uh, you know, but then my friends keep telling me that I shouldn't you know, eat, as, eat as much. I show my, 
<laughs> and then lastly, you know, I, I, I love uh, sitting down with friends, having a drink and just relaxing. So I actually look forward to, you know, in the very near future, to sitting down with each one of you and sharing a beer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Please support our affiliates with your transaction. Speaking of which, it's now time for our affiliate introductions for today. All paid affiliates, please line up to the left. Please remember no promotions, just a greeting, and then make your way through the right side of the floor. First, we will begin with our affiliates in person. Good morning, everyone. Brandon Sobranski with First American NHC. Have a fantastic day. Good morning, everybody. Mackenzie Holland from Morrison Plus Property Inspections. Hope you have a fantastic day. Howdy, Angie Tang, First American Title. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Thursday, Lena and Carrie from U.S. Bank and Mortgage. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am Lucia. I am from Carapa, Chinese American Real Estate Professionals Association. I don't judge. Good morning, another Angie, but Angie Wong from Loom Direct. Have a nice day. Good morning, my name is Phoebe Liu from East Coast Bank. I'm a local commercial home officer. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Cosmo Sanchez from New A Fund. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Maria Howard with Over Public Home Protection. You have an amazing day. Good morning, everyone. Brandon Lamb with Olympus Esco. Have a wonderful week. Good morning, everyone. Sage Gomez with my NHG. Have a great day. Good morning, everybody. My name is James Chen. You're a good neighbor, State Farm agent in the city of Walnut. Good morning, everyone. I'm Derek Talbert from CST Insurance. You guys have a great day. Look who made it out of the crawl space. It's uh, Joseph with Pillar of Fate. <laughs> the Post Home Inspectors. Have a great day, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Yolanda Martinez at end of WFG National Title Company. Have an awesome day. Good morning. This is Master Alex. You're lucky from Soy Master. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Alba Moy from Moyes from Alhambra. Have a great day. Be a productive day. I'm Jeff Berg. I'm with Daniel today from Western Bruder. Good morning. Alina Chu from Glen Oaks Escrow. Have a wonderful day. Good morning. Dora Learn, new affiliate member, Greater Modern Park Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, David Tran with Home Girl Home Warranty. Like Dora said, you should hang out with me because I can help you win some money. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe Haggerty. I'm with Orange Coast Title. Good morning, Nancy Chan, Lawyer's Title. I have a little announcement. It's uh, there is a table there every week. We have an uh, auction. Auction is things are made or donated by people with a lot of love. This one person I know, Nancy Hunt. Knitted this, hand knitted this. It's wool and alpaca. You know the material is expensive. So there is a bidding sheet there, and all the money goes to the charity foundation of this association. I already put my name and the dollar amount there. See if anybody can help give me. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we will call on our affiliates who are joining us virtually. First up, Judy Chow, AAA Capital Investment. Thank you. Good morning, this is Judy, Senior Law Officer. Have a great week. Up next, John Wax from SNAP NHD. Good morning, everyone. John Wax with SNAP NHD Natural Hazard Disclosures. Wishing you an amazing day. Stay safe and uh, thank you for your support. Mark Wu, Lavo Insurance Service. He's not here. Teresa Lam, Corinthian Title Company. Not here either. Sandy Franco, First American. Thank you, Billboard meeting. Okay. Sorry, not here either. Is that Sandy? No, she's not here. Okay. You good? Yes. 
Thank you again to all our affiliates. Please remember to support our affiliates. We're happy to include open pitching to our hybrid MLS breakfast meeting. Reminder, if you'd like to pitch your listing, you must go to the website, wsgbar.com, click on open pitch, fill out the caravan request form and submit it no later than Tuesday on the midnight of the week that you want to pitch. Today, we have no listings featured, but if we did, this is where we would do that. At this time, please help me welcome our moderator for today, Lu Tan from Perpa, who will be introducing our panelists. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. We have two great panelists today, and we're gonna be talking about blogs and leaking. So uh, from Rocket Roofing, we have Alan Ibarra. Would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Alan here, Rocket Roofing. It's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. I'm the owner operator. We cover all five counties in Southern California and we assist in everything roof related, residential and commercial. Thank you. And then we have Daniel Westering from Western Supreme Rooter. Hello, everybody. I'm Daniel. I've uh, been a plumber now for approximately eight years. I'm local, living in Arcadia, and enjoy doing plumbing and working around good people. Great. We have several questions for our, our panelists. And uh, since we're talking about blogs and leaks today, let's start with blogging. Alan, my roof, I'm told that it's clogged. Why would it be clogged? So the simple question to that is there's going to be two primary locations where your roof would have impeded water flow. The first and most obvious is going to be your gutters. Uh, most houses have gutters installed around the perimeter without annual or biannual maintenance of the uh, gutter guards, lead guards, and the downspouts. You will see impeded water flow that can restrict and cause water to rise up against the tiles or shingles. On general field areas on your actual principal roof, uh, you're going to see that most often than not, your valleys are going to be clogged. We see it a lot on tile roofs. A lot of the original builders and installers kept the valley tiles very tight. Uh, they did that for aesthetic purposes. However, over time, we have noticed a lot of restricting with loose debris that ends up building into mud clumps. Once again, once the water flow is restricted and not coming down those pan flashing, we're seeing that water rising up underneath the tiles and finding imperfections within the roof's underlay, uh, leading to other issues. So definitely keep your gutter clean, keep your flashing sealed, and keep your valleys clean and maintained as well. Thanks, Daniel. Oh. I mean, Alan. Daniel. Plumbing, we always hear about clogging. So what made it clog? Well, flushable wipes are not flushable is a good point for everybody to know. And there are roots and all kinds of debris that can get in the line. Uh, grease is really common for kitchen lines and soap is very sticky when it goes down the line too. So things like this and then the material of the pipe as well can begin sometimes to corrode and close its diameter as well. These are all things leading towards clogs. Regular maintenance can solve this. Great. So Alan, talking about leaks, my attic is leaking. So is the roof leaking? So in most cases, if, and we've done it before calls in the middle of summer, the month of August, well, oh my God, I have a roof leak. I said, how? It hasn't rained in six months. Um, in your attic, you are going to have some utility components, uh, you know, which are going to primarily be your HVAC condensate lines. We do see a lot of sweating in the refrigerant lines, but we also see, once again, clogging and obstructions to the actual condensate drain lines. So if you're experiencing attic staining or roof leaks, um, as they can be, you know, conceived as on a dry uh, climate day, then first thing to do is investigate your HVAC system or potential plumbing. Um, other than that, if you have moisture staining in the attic, the attic in fact is not leaking, it's the roof. It's obviously penetrating through the roof sheeting into the attic space. And then that would have to be examined at the exterior to identify what the main point of entry is and take corrections uh, from there. So Daniel, my plumbing is leaking. What will be causing that leak? Yeah, the tap water 
for every CV is going to include two corrosive things that attack plumbing. That's going to be the minerals in the water, calcium and magnesium, controlled by using salt softeners and chlorine in the water. You've all felt it from swimming pools on your skin. It does the same to metals, plastics, and rubber seals on the plumbing system. Um, a very easy way to find and prevent this type of stuff from causing more damage is to just go through your house under each sink and inspect for these types of things that they just discussed, water stains or slow drips and leaks to prevent it, fix it immediately. Uh, Alan, in residential real estate, we see shingle roof, tile roof, and sometimes flat roof. What are the differences and how long do they last? So it is, we used to say predominantly shingles uh, kind of rule the jungle here as far as the amount of roof that actually had ample shingles. Um, in regards to longevity, uh, your traditional and more modern Title 24, you know, three tab architectural shingles, is going to give you about 30 years of service life. There are premium products like Presidential and Grand Spoils available uh, that will give you 50 to 60 years of service life. And that's basically determined off of the mills, the thickness of the most fiber. Most traditional tile roofs that you're going to see now before 2007, if it's early construction, is going to have an emulsion underlayment. So there's always a misconception that you have a clay tile or a cement tile roof that's going to last forever. Um, that misconception is the material itself would not be great, meaning the tiles. Will they retain their shaping content from the manufacturer? No. You will exhibit cracks and shifting with the of those tiles. And more importantly, the house is not the water barrier that underlays this. The underlayment, once again, prior to 2007, when we use in a molten base, just like your shingles, it will dry up eventually, become brittle, no longer pass any viability test. The roof really does become vulnerable between 25 and 30 years, even on a tile roof. So, safe to say, if you have a tile roof or a shingle roof, you're looking more or less around the same life expectancy for the water barrier. Um, more modern underlays now provide more protection. You have synthetics, you have granulated peeling sticks, as they call them. Those are going to give you a little bit more of a premium protection. Once again, we can get into that 40, 50 year mark uh, conservatively. Flat roofs, because they have more direct UV exposure, you know, they're not pitched away from the sun partially throughout the day. It is going to limit the life expectancy. Um, the UV from the sun is what degrades the roof more than any other conditional element. Um, the reason why is acclimation. As the sun beats down on the roof, it's causing it to expand and contract. It's also degranulating the roof surface as those minerals start to kind of rinse off to absorb the emulsion. So flat roofs, um, because of their inherent nature and orientation, low pitch also goes in ponds water, which is to be anticipated but still you know treated proactively. Um, they're going to give us a shorter lifespan, you know. So on a traditional Rolled modified granulated, expect 15, 18 years of service life. You go into premium products like TVC, TPO, EPDM. Once again, with proper maintenance and care, those will get you in the 30, 40 year range. If you're still using fur roof, which is you know, gravel over tar, then uh, just have fun you know, uh, maintaining that quite often. Okay. Oh, quite a big difference in yeah. the difference of roofs. Yeah. Okay. Um, Daniel. What are the most common problems that we encounter with plumbing that we should be aware of? Not good at memorizing, but I'm good with organization. That's why I'm a plumber. So I'll go off of my list here, keep it all tight. Small drips are very common. Uh, leaking faucets, drips can really accumulate over a year to make it an insane amount of water loss. Uh, clock drains, super common, as we talked about first and foremost. Running toilets are a very common issue, which waste a lot of water. A simple fix, just a flapper or a fill valve in a lot of cases. Uh, low water pressure can be coming just from the city, sure. And there's also the chance that there's debris clogging things inside of faucets that can be released quite simply. And uh, then old pipes can cause low pressure too. This would need to get replaced. In that. King pipes we were talking about as well is very common. And that's something you can easily identify by just a quick visual inspection under sinks and around your water heaters and anywhere you have access to see the pipes. Water heater issues, super common. Slow draining toilets, garbage disposal failing or not working properly. And sump pumps are one of the biggest ones because you usually find out that they're not working on a heavy rain and it's beginning to flood already. 
Thanks. Um, Alan, how, how is it that this, when we change the rule, what should be, what should we be thinking about regarding warranty certification? Well, every licensed grouper um, is going to be offering some level of warranty over their workmanship. Um, most authorized vendors, for example, Rocket Roofing is a preferred contractor performance warranty manufacturer. There are limited lifetime NDLs with a no dollar limit warranties that are passed through from the manufacturer to the installer and obviously protects the home and not the homeowner. Um, there are stipulations to that regarding maintenance, the transfers uh, of ownership. So you got to just make sure that those are all recorded. Secondly, I would not advise on solely being dependent on the manufacturer NDL. I think there should always be some level of protection from the installer themselves, whether it be us or another roofing contractor, uh, in regards to workmanship. Along the Juten corridor, it is considered a high wind area. You're still using sheet mold or even tiles. It's you know um, an area that's susceptible for wind damage, especially as the material starts to kind of acclimate and settle into itself. So stipulation for roof warranty on a new install, ours is 10 years. Can't speak for the others. I've seen everything from five to 10 years, depending on the scope of work and roofing material being used. But industry standard, I will look for a workmanship guarantee directly from the contractor installer between five and 10 years and make sure they're an authorized vendor of any of the big box manufacturers of the products, the roofing products, whether it be GAF, uh, Malarkey, or Owens Corning. And make sure there's a manufacturer NDL for the material itself because you don't want your material to you have production issues that are not notated until midlife or you know, you know, uh, one third of the life. So after that first decade, when it should give you 30 years, after 10 years, you start noticing product issues and not installation issues. So I would look for a two part protection plan, not only for the material in the long term, but also on the warranty for the install on the uh, short term. Um, a certification is a little bit different. You can touch on certifications now. So certifications are designed for existing roofs. Um, obviously, the certifications are for roofs that are less than perfect. Um, the roof is evaluated to uh, its ability to shed water. It can be requested by a home buyer for peace of mind because our warranties or certifications do come with an NDL two yearly pre warranty. Um, they also go up to five years. A lot of insurance carriers now, we've been getting a lot, a lot of calls this particular year. We've been seeing a lot of non-renewal of home insurance policies. They're getting strict, just like the roofing industry, water remediation industry, the insurance companies, they got overwhelmed with claims, you know. Um, because of that, we've been seeing a lot stricter policies. Once again, um, when policies come to term, so we're seeing a lot of, you know, exclusions on the roof without certifications. First thing we want to do is examine the roof. Our anticipations are not that it's going to be perfect, but we do have a standard SOP. You know, we can't be negligent uh, or incompetent when we're doing our assessments of the roof. You know, our standard stipulation is we can't have any missing or damaged material or any damaged mastic around the uh, pipe collars, roof jacks, and penetrations. You know, degranulation is a lot of all the way up until the fiberglass is fully exposed. And then with tile roof, same thing. We're doing a service sample of random areas throughout the roof to determine what the overall health and condition of the uh, underlayment is. Um, our job is not to impede the ability of the homeowner to uh, get their home certification, but at the same time, we can't, you know, we have to make sure that everything is done within a standard operational procedure. Um, so there's no room for error and or you know, uh, side guessing. So. Oh, that's a lot to know. So, uh, Daniel, how do you guarantee your work? Uh, okay, so with plumbing, we are typically offering a workmanship warranty to cover all the work we're doing when we install something. And manufacturers will also offer a warranty that we're going to include in work to honor as well. Uh, for example, with like a tankless water heater, there's a varying warranty on it or on the water heater, regardless. They're going to cover you for some parts and uh, but maybe not the labor. So we can go through the processes to get these parts for you under warranty and install them still, whether it's through the manufacturer or Western Reader, there's different types of 
But then uh, new installation of plumbing is a little different too. We are offering in some cases, five year warranties for brand new plumbing systems in a house. Uh, 10 year warranties is very common for new construction as well in plumbing systems. But, uh, Great. So, Alan, how often should we maintain a roof? Well, for traditional shingle, um, you know, realistically, every five years or so, uh, the most thing to maintain is going to be your uh, lashings. Most uh, emulsion sealants are not UV um, retardant. Basically, they're going to absorb a lot of that sunlight. They're going to become dry and brittle. As the wind pushes up against the uh, vents and collars, you know, they're going to start to kind of split and break. Those are direct actions within the house about the simplest, most cost effective uh, way to maintain the roof. Second thing we talked about earlier was just the gutters and valley cleaning. If you find yourself with a closed valley system, make sure that all those areas are blown off seasonally, you know, after the fall, before the heavy rain storms of the holidays come in. Um, tile roofs, once again, um, I would recommend at least a three year service on tile roofs. Um, just checking through slick tiles and broken tiles. When I purchased my home eight years ago, I had 11 broken tiles and replaced them all the following season. I bought the house in May. By December, I had three more broken tiles. So, you know, tiles will break and shift for various reasons. A lot of it's caused by imperfections, you know, small hairline fractures that start to show more prominently in the sun once again, uh, get on the roof. Um, on flat roof, whether it's residential or commercial, honestly, we want to really be proactive. Uh, flat roof, I would highly recommend an annual inspection and maintenance of it. Once again, seeing a lot of sun, a lot of acclimation, and there's a lot of seams. Um, your stuffer greens are going to be the most important part of the uh, roofing system. We want to make sure that it's free from obstructions, and we want to make sure that, you know, um, no heavy accumulation of water. Okay. So, Daniel, uh, I hear that sewage problems are very difficult to deal with sometimes and expensive too. Why would that be? Yeah, the main sewer line for every home is susceptible, susceptible to all types of clogs and problems, including breakages as well. The main sewer for each house, uh, the homeowners are gonna own and be responsible for all the way into the front yard and through sometimes the sidewalk. And this can even include going into the middle of the street to the point where it attaches into the city sewer, um, responsible the whole way. So this is an extremely expensive thing if we have to open up city streets. Different plumbing companies have different levels of certification to allow them whether or not they can open up city streets. Western Reuter is allowed for all Los Angeles counties to open up a city street if needed. But uh, besides that, the sewer, and back up with uh, uh, dirty, very dirty water, and then end up causing damage inside your home to floors and walls. Uh, in the case of a second story and roofing as well, if sewers are running through the roof. Um, so the plumbing is just basically affecting all types and sections of the house because water will go wherever is the least resistant. Um, besides that, uh, the, the sewer line is extremely important to keep clean and maintained, so this issue will never occur. And there are also other tricks besides regular maintenance, like installing what's called a ground level clean out in the front yard of your house to allow for any kinds of problems that occur with a backup or a not draining sewer line to open up a cap in the front yard and protect the inside of your guys' house floors all that. Okay. Alan, how do we know whether we need to repair the roof or change the roof, replace the roof? So once again, going back to just a site assessment of the type of roof on a shingle roof is going to be quite noticeable. Um, if you have any of that pitch that's Visible from the ground elevation on a cheaper roof, you're going to notice glistening. Um, once you notice heavy glistening, um, that's going to be the fiber of the shingles. So the fibers is going to be uh, embedded into the emulsion and it has a granulated cap sheet. Granulation is there to give the roof its color, some texturing weight, and also to deflect the uh, UV once again. It's going to be the aggregate. The emulsion is the water barrier of the shingles, and 
fiberglass. It was going to be almost like I call it a reamer. It gives us a structure, but it's not so gelatinous and pliable. Um, over years, you will see that those granules will rinse. The emulsion will be exposed to the sun. It will dry and crack, exposing that fiberglass. That, according to the manufacturer, is when their product has exceeded and or reached its service life. We use the manufacturer's recommendations for almost everything. Uh, so that the city, when we pull the permits, we look at their SRI codes, the total reflective index codes. We look at their nail pattern requirements. We look at their exposures. And we also take their advice as to when uh, their product has you know, uh, reached its capacity. So this information does not come from us as an individual. It's information that we get directly from the manufacturer to relay it back to the consumer based off of our observations. With the tower roof, it's the same. You can have 200 broken tiles. In fact, we've done a repair in a golf course home in Rancho Santa Fe, San Diego County. We had four pallets of tiles. You know, the 8,000 square foot roof replaced almost 1,500 square feet of it. So, you know, the underlayment was really good. You know, the only problem is everybody in the community is not very good at golf. You know, they're all aiming at the house. So that was a very large extensive repair, you know. Um, but once again, it's just one of those things with the cloud roof, it doesn't matter the amount of broken tiles, realistically, they can all be repaired. What needs to be taken into consideration is going to be the quality of the underlayment and you as the homeowner to determine what your expectations are for that roof. Okay, um, leaks can be repaired. The problem with leaks is they are quite frustrating. You know, uh, when we are inundated in the uh, primary months, December through March, we get overwhelmed with calls and waiting lists, not only with us, but for other roofing companies. Well, it's not so much fixing the roofs, it's managing expectations of mitigating interior water damage. Oftentimes, the damage caused by the leak is much more expensive than the cause for repair to the roof. So it's just one of those things to consider as a homeowner. Once again, it's going to be specific to a site assessment, determining what the longevity of that roof is, and then having the homeowner make When there are leaks and drainage problems with equipment that use water, as water pipes, the plumber is the one to be called? In what instance? I would say there is a small amount of confusion over whether a plumber will be called for maybe an air conditioning system in some cases and not. We will go out and service air conditioning condensation lines, just like uh, Alan has said too, although he's doing roofing and dealing with condensation lines on air conditioning units as well. Things like that, there are a little bit of a gray area, who to call specifically, but anything with pressurized water, drainage of storm water, sewage, gas, Things like this is a time to call a plumber. With a, a very specialized company that's been around long enough, they can do all of these services. So that would include like dishwashers and laundry, you know that. Nailed it. Another perfect ex example of a gray area there as well. The dishwashers and laundries are considered some type of an appliance. We would typically, as a plumber, be hooking up the water lines that will supply water to these appliances and build the drainage systems that will help them drain. Installation of them may or may not be possible to achieve through a plumber, although I've been around plenty of those jobs myself and done it myself too. Some companies may say it's not really our job as much as maybe an appliance specialist. There's a, a line where that eats each other. Anybody here on the audience have any questions for the panelist? <laughs> My question is, uh, if you can line up. Um, my question would be, nowadays, uh, the governor has these rules. You build uh, new houses or you do more extensive fixing of your house. If they involved, um, they usually generally mandate it. You need to have uh, um, a solar power. And solar power, as we know, 90% of them is on the rooftop. And I always drove by my houses with old fashioned jingles. So when I drove by those expensive houses, it's more than 700,000, they usually have tire roof. As a real estate salesperson, we tell the, the buyers, oh, tire roof, 100 year or 90 year lifetime. But in my mind, I knew before I listened to this gentleman, I already knew from experience, they always problems. 
And now, in addition, this government said, we got to save energy. We got to have this solar panel. Now it's all by not only the tile roof and also on the top of so many panels. And I heard so many complaints from general people. I just bought a, a remote area, a real cheap house. They had the existing solar panel on my roof. Number one, I don't even know how to operate. I said, where Excuse is me, it? can you please let us know what is the question? The question is when there is solar panels and number one, the buyer does not know how to operate it. And what kind of qualification person is supposed to call to fix it? That's number one. Number two, in order to fix that kind of roof, the tile roof with a solar panel on it, and what you're supposed to do. But when it comes to solar panel, do you have any concern with the UV the amount of electrical output or input from the actual array panels into your electrical distribution system, your breaker box? That question is going to be for a photoelectric technician. It will be uh, an electrical contractor as well as you can. So, or best thing to do is always retain information from the installers. A lot of the uh, solar companies are going to have maintenance programs for their own equipment and some level of warranty. If that warranty is expired or there's no retention of information from the original installer, um, I recommend Jeffrey B. Dill from the Solar Guys in California. They're located in the city of Downey. Um, they should be fully installed in the energy audits. When it comes to the roof leaking and being problematic under the solar equipment, once again, solar and cellular are quite similar as the technology has advanced dramatically throughout the years. We're going to notice array panels getting smaller, uh, tracks and mounts to the roof, you know, becoming a little bit different and more watertight. On a tile roof, traditionally they're using L-shaped brackets. Those L-shaped brackets are keeping about a quarter inch gap on the tiles that popped up. When it comes to rushing water, you know, they were running underneath the tiles and finding imperfections. The general rule of thumb for solar installation is they should have 10 years of service life to the under. We work with a lot of solar contractors, especially for electric technicians. However, we don't deal with the electrical part, but we do have authorization to remove and reinstall the equipment in this exact existing location in an attempt to uh, remediate a roof issue like a leak. Um, a lot of the solar equipment that were installed 10 years ago, people got into the trays quite quickly. So even 10, 12, 15 years ago, you could solar install. When they did the initial survey of that roof underlay, at that point in time, it could have been deemed satisfactory. As it aged, as those L brackets on the tiles have caused water to, you know, infiltrate underneath the tiles, um, and has caused premature wear, and it's likely led to decay of the underlayment. Um, Solar panels are obviously removable. It creates a little bit more of a burden uh, for the technicians. Um, so, and then parking becomes a little bit difficult if you use larger cars to fully cover all the equipment in the entire field area. But once again, uh, problem can be fixed. It just requires a few more additional steps. So if you have an electrical issue with your solar equipment, talk to a photoelectric technician specializing in the electrical portions. If you have a roof related issue with a non-transferable warranty, then just contact the licensed uh, local grouper or ourselves, and we will uh, analyze and address the situation accordingly. Thanks, Next, Sage. We are not directly affiliated with them, but we would be able to provide qualified estimate, estimates about the, the stuff we find in our findings. That's usually the step that we're involved in when we're working with insurance and stuff like that. Not directly. Uh, same for us, no direct connections with the uh, home warranty companies or actual insurance companies. We get a lot of indirect referrals. The clients reach them first as they resource for information and or references to help alleviate their issues. So it's kind of you know indirect. They'll call the insurance carrier, their uh, you know a home warranty company. If you have a roof leak, they say, well, you know we just reimburse, we don't actually fix. Contact a roofer. Who do you know? So we'll get indirect referrals from uh, different insurance companies. But there's no direct affiliation or contracts with this. Buck? Yeah, actually, based on your last answer, I have two questions now. Uh, just wanted to clarify when you have solar uh, and you have a problem on the roof, if it's electrical, call the electrician, if it's roof related, uh, a roofer, and then if it's solar, the solar people that installed it. That's kind of the way I said. Yeah, so in a nutshell, depending on what the system is, if most people do treat their warranties with their solar company very serious, uh, 
Before, uh, a lot of the solar companies had subcontracted roofing companies. The roofing companies will go out there and do the initial survey, you know, service the roof and deem it satisfactory. And there'll be an agreement between that roofing contractor and the solar company to basically protect the equipment that was installed. If you contacted your solar installer, they will basically fall back on their, you know, preferred subcontractor, preferred vendor. A lot of solar companies are starting to grow. They've actually started to create and develop their own in-house roofing departments. With solar demands and maintenance of a, a C39 license, um, a lot of them still can use outsourced, so subcontractors. So there's a little bit, you know, you got to be weird, you know what I mean? Um, we work, like I said, directly with Current Home. They're in Temecula, and we work directly with Beverly Green Zone from the Solar Guys of California. They're kind of around more, uh, you know, um, more flagship and corporate, so they have different offices and multiple Let's locations. See. But um, once again, if you have an issue and it's under warranty, you have the contact information with the solar company, contact them first. I'll let you know right now, even if it's under warranty, a lot of times, you know, and this has been before, they would authorize a third party vendor to make the alteration for them. The way the solar companies see it is they're going to spend the money regardless, whether they pay their guys or a third party. However, if they pay a third party, it almost releases them into liability and places it on that third party. So you will start to see a lot of solar companies say, oh, you've got somebody else that's going to alter it, have at it, we'll, you know, uh, get us an estimate, and we'll write the check. Because either way, they're looking at it as the money spent, but they're spending the money and retaining the liability, not they're spending the money and relinquishing the liability to the third party, whether us or somebody else. So you'll see that uh, coming to fruition quite often. Okay. Okay, my actual question was, um, uh, oh. it was generated by what she was asking. Uh, just quickly, uh, when we recommend uh, to our clients get a uh, roof inspection or something, we uh, I'm finding out that there's a difference sometimes between someone saying, hey, you need to have a roof repaired or a new roof. Uh, can you kind of respond? Once that? again, it kind of just depends on, we charge for our roof inspections first and foremost. So let's just put that on the table. The reason we charge is so we can provide an honest opinion. Um, at a certain point, any roofing contract providing free estimates, it has to sell work. They have the bills to pay, uh, they have employees and overhead. So I'm always susceptible for the free estimate because that's really what you're going to get. You're going to get a free estimate, and you know your their opinion is going to be screwed at some point. It's just the reality of it. We do charge 165 for our assessment of the roof that's refundable if any repairs are made in the future. I don't lose anything. My guys don't lose anything. We have our cost covered for time and total expenses and office time. Uh, to generate an honest and thorough report. With us, you're only going to get what you need. Uh, we're going to provide photos so you can come up with your own determination and conclusions. You're basically going to have a photo and then our you know, commentary regarding what our observation and recommendations are. Once again, it's all based on client expectations. You know what I mean? We work with a lot of home buyers and we can tell the client, we're going to certify this roof is good for up to five years. Five years and $20,000 hypothetically for a possible new roof is too close for them. You know what I mean? So they will say five years is not good enough for me. And they're going to try to negotiate with the homeowner for support of credit or concession to have either full or partial roof replacement because that's important to them. Um, once again, so it's all going to be based on the individual. You know, I've got two roofs that were, in my opinion, in need of replacement three years before I arrived. And the home buyer was like, oh, we're good. You know what I mean? We'll fix it later. They ask for an estimate and they should get a rough calculation. Uh, we did inform them that financing our options uh, through third-party vendors like Parth and Lightstream, and they made their decisions based off of their personal, uh, you know, uh, positions. Thank okay, you. we're short of time. Yeah, one last question. No, that was off. So, some questions from Zoom is: Concrete tile roofs life describe a concrete tile roofs life is described as forty to fifty years. How do you inspect the underlayment at that 40 or 45 year point and the cost of the inspection? And also, how do you normally how much do you normally charge to replace, let's say, a thousand square foot composite shingle roof? Do you go by charging per square foot or of the living square footage or the actual size of the roof? Okay, for that particular question, have uh, the uh, person please call him directly for cost estimate. Is there okay. any other question regarding that on Zoom? Yeah. Uh, for for Daniel, anything for plumbing? Just one last question yeah. for plumbing. 
Uh, it is a silly question. Uh, does Drano um, a problem issue with a plumber would recommend not to use Drano because it's very corrosive against some of the materials made in the drain system. And if there's actively Drano sitting in stack and sewage water, our machines will end up going right through. It could be very corrosive to our machines as well. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. And thank you, Daniel and Nada, for coming today. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Daniel. It's time for the attendance drawing. All West San Gabriel Valley members are included in the attendance drawing. Not all can be displayed, but you are included. Today's pot is $250. Please remember $25 gets added every week. So if we don't have a winner today, $275 next week. When your name is called, you must announce that you are present. I'm going to call your name three times. And if you don't respond, we will move on. No exception. May Zhang going once. <laughs> May Zhang going twice. May Zhang. All right, let's do it again next week. It's time for our Amazon gift card drawing. We'll select three winners from those attending in person. Each winner will receive a $25 Amazon gift card. If you have a business card, now is the last chance. And our three winners. Tracy Chen, Eduardo Iguchi. Did you win last week? Angie Wong. When announcements come, it's when announcements come. Ling Tao, our president, has a shirt to wrap along by pulling a business card. Betty, we just reached back from NAR last week. Uh, during the uh, trip there, we had a uh, riding with a brand. We were at the baseball field. So they give everybody a t shirt. And I kind of went over there like three times. Always like that. Um, so I got a large. It doesn't well, fit you. I'm we, sorry. But here, we don't need to be micro This is the NAR t shirt that we're giving out to everybody. It's called the riding with a brand and the R. So you know what that R means, right? Yeah. Sorry, I don't hear you. Okay, let's. Too big, I'm sorry. That was a good guy. I thought of a lot. Paul Tran. Paul? He is now. He is now. That's what they said. Wow. Join our education classes. A list of upcoming classes is displayed on your screen. Tomorrow, between 9.30 and 12.30 p.m., there's a 45-hour DRE license renewals continuing education webinar. Next Wednesday, the 24th, from 9 to 10 a.m., it's free. You can all attend the CRMLS virtual training. Realtors Property Resource. Next Friday from 9 to 4 p.m., you can join the Notary Public Webinar at a cost of $129. Finally, on Friday, June the 2nd, from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m., there's a 45-hour DRE License Renewal Continuing Education Webinar. It's time for our 50-50 raffle. $47. The winner is 5-2. Zero, zero, one, zero, eight. Last three digits is one, zero, eight. Hey, Talia, at this time, if you've submitted an announcement form, please come up to make your announcement. You have 30 seconds. First up, Alex Lee, KW Executive. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to announce on behalf of the KDC, the Global Business Council. We are hosting a Global Cultural Meeting. June 14th from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. And uh, it's going to be food tasting and non-alcoholic beverage included, uh, $15 per person. And uh, if, you know, by before, you can uh, do it on the uh, register or the QR code. It's uh, $20 at the door. And this will be uh, karaoke. And uh, also, you can just uh, 
like a, like a cultural fashion event. And uh, karaoke is a five hour song. Okay. Uh, Joy and uh, we say we do. Next up, Lucia Tam from Kerba. Your next talk. Just want to remind everybody that the Kerba 2023 Real Estate Expo has been canceled for Saturday. So please don't go there. But my name will be there. Okay. Thank you. Boss. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a quick reminder uh, our well anticipated golf foundation golf tournament is a few weeks away. And uh, we just want to let you know that we emailed to all the members and, number, and affiliates. So you are welcome to invite others as well. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Dora, the Greater Monterey Park Chamber of Commerce. City of Monterey Park today, we have a business card exchange mixer at 4 to 8 p.m. at Trans 5000 Marketplace Drive in Motor Park in Chipotle. Any buy of any chickens, 20% donation will back to the Police Explorer Post 300. That's a fundraising program for Chipotle. Uh, we had that last year, last couple of years uh, for uh, COVID. The last one is the May 21st, this upcoming Sunday. Anyone who loves cars, Collectible, worldwide, whatever, 7 to 11 a.m. cars and pie in Maria Calendar, 220 South Atlantic Motor Park, serving at 9 o'clock for the brunch. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. Please join us next week. We'll have a CAR and NAR reports. Thank you, everyone, for joining our meeting today. This meeting is adjourned.